So, and we are live already. Good morning, Hawaii. Good morning, Chuck, once again. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Good Thank morning. You. Aloha. Good evening. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again for being with us. And My pleasure. My pleasure. In your time. <laughs> uh, so as we have been speaking right now, um, I find right now there's, there's, as you say many times, or said many times, this transition time, and we are kind of heading into something new, and old stuff is breaking away, but it's troublesome for, for some people. And um, as you said in your newsletter, that uh, every pain and every problem is coming from the past. Um, so I can see people and myself <laughs> struggling going into this through this transition, and there's there's lots of stuff popping up. Um, and I had a session with you last week where exactly we went into this theme that problems right now are coming from the past, from the really ancient past, actually, or other lifetimes. Um, and uh, the question is why why is this happening? Why do we? repeat and replay all those problems and all those this pain in our present lives well we repeat and replay them until we learn the answer yeah. and then then we don't have to then we don't have to go through that um one book the the game of life that mm -hmm. i wrote many years ago what you know i talked about okay here are the success principles for this life but I said, <clears throat> basically, the the big thing about this life is that, first of all, it's all illusion. It's a big dream, like Buddha said 2,500 years ago. And so many people have said it also since then. And it's like how to break out of this life, to, how to break out of the illusions how to see the real world and the difference of this world and the and the real world and is that it's a heavenly world mm -hmm. it's a beautiful world there's no suffering there and the difference there is there's innocence mm -hmm. when everybody's innocence no one attacks anybody else and no one attacks themselves so back in the 70s when i began this healing journey you know, I would work with a person about any kind of problem. And I was doing a lot of drug rehab back then mm -hmm. with, uh, with the people there. And we would start talking about what, what was stopping them in their lives. And then we'd end up in the past. Mm -hmm. We'd end up talking about something that happened in their family. And it just happened time after time after time after time. And uh, basically, that's when I learned hypnosis. Look into my eyes. <laughs> you know? and, and, but basically, that's a, it's, a, it's really excellent, but it's a much slower method. <clears throat> and I developed a way to get right to the heart in our experience of where a problem occurred. And then if you could change the root or the anchor of it around, you can change the whole pattern of it up through your lives. Because typically in each place we suffered, we got off the track. Yeah. And if you get off the track, uh, you know, a step or two, you're a train wreck. So one of the questions I ask people, I could ask you, Betty, Betty, how many train wrecks do you have inside? 200. <laughs> 200 train wrecks. Now, if you recycled those, you'd get rich. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? But they, what they do is they create patterns for other train wrecks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or if in your relationship, it becomes a shipwreck. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's all coming from the past. Your relationship patterns come from your family patterns. Mm -hmm. And your relationship patterns lead to your success or defeat patterns. Mm -hmm. And these all began someplace. Mm -hmm. So if typically I'm working with someone and we get back to a place 
you know, when they were a teenager or a child or something like that, it's like, we'll end up back in the womb because that's the original misunderstanding. Now you go, how could, you know, something when you're like a con conception in 1976, I remember I worked with a guy who just felt um, rejected his whole life. And it began when he was conceived because his mother was feeling that way. So when we went back and we transformed that scene, then what happened was, well, this was a 21 year old sailor, good looking kid, you know, and, but he, he got his first girlfriend in his life. My. <laughs> I mean, it was just, you know, it's like the proof of the pudding, they say, is in the tasting. So mm -hmm. if it has results like that, and it has thousands and thousands and thousands of results like that, tens of thousands of results, then you begin to say, well, this is, this is a principle. I can count on this. Mm -hmm. And back at the same time, uh, 74, 75, I was I was teaching at the Naval Drug Alcohol and Drug School, and I was one of the teachers back there. And one of the, the one of the courses that I taught was about ancestral patterns, how how that carries down generation after generation. And um, we're very actually we're very similar to our grandparents. We're much more similar to our grandparents in DNA and psychology than we are to our parents. Mm -hmm. And so things keep leapfrogging and, and you can change those. You know, I've learned six, eight, nine methods about changing those, you know, kind of ancestral problems. But what I would do is using their intuition, go back as many generations as was necessary. Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> see what happened back there. And these stories are just popping into their minds. And then, okay, that was how that, how did their life turn out? Ugh, really bad, really terrible. <laughs> it's like that scarcity or poverty or, or illness or whatever it was that happened back there. And it could be different in each generation as it showed up. Lack of confidence, you know, uh, disastrous relationships, fight with the other people in the town, sometimes curses, sometimes major curses. And you go, really? Yeah. See, if you believe that you can curse somebody, Betty, have you ever cursed any ex-boyfriends? Who comes up? Uh, <laughs> Not consciously. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're we're not conscious of this. Usually this is actually an unconscious pattern. But if you curse people, then you believe that you can be cursed. Yeah. If you attack people, I mean, this is a simple thing. It's like our whole mind is full of attack, of judgment. And and when you attack, you see attack coming back to you. You get frightened. But fear doesn't begin out there. Fear begins in here. It begins with what we're doing. And then we see that's how the world, what the world is doing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, at the levels I'm working, it's like our mind has made this world. You know, we, uh, you know, as A Course in Miracles says, it's my mind that invented this world. You can't be a victim because your mind invented it. And that's the kind of jaw-dropping thing that I found back in the 70s. And, you know, it's like that this event was chosen by a part of the mind that's quite hidden from yourself. I mean, everybody's doing the best they can, given with what they know, but most of us don't know what's true, what's important. And we go off for ego goals, which means we're going off for illusions. And then we get disillusioned. And then we get depressed. And we get heartbroken. You know, most people, you know, don't realize that when you have a heartbreak, you're also fighting with that person. You're trying to get your needs met your way. You're trying to be right. 
And usually you're the dependent one, mm -hmm. almost always. You need them for something. Mm -hmm. And then the heartbreak is, you, is the last final straw where you're trying to use emotional blackmail. Mm -hmm. If I bleed all over your doorstep, Betty, how, how good can you be? Or please don't. <laughs> right, right. But people, when they have heartbreaks, that's one level of what's going on. It's still that power struggle. And the thing is, you know, we think we're heartbroken. We think it's about love, but it's not about love. You know, if, if it hurts, it isn't love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's your attachment. It's your need. You're trying to get something. And if you, the paradox is, if you let go of your attachment, you can have all you want. Yeah. It's no big deal, but people are like, I gotta have this, but then you can't have it. Mm -hmm. Or even if you, in the rare case, got it, you wouldn't value it mm -hmm. because it's not a bonding. It's not a connection. It's not a part of you. This whole world is a world of separation. So what brings, what brings us together? Well, bonding does. Bonding means love and success with ease. Every time we got wounded, we, it looked like they did something to us, right? Yes. But we, <laughs> but, but we were breaking bonding. There's this hidden part of our mind that always wants to be in control that always wants to be right, that always wants to do it its way. And, and that's the big thing because you can't have a trauma without that hidden piece, that hidden linchpin. If you clear that part, if you go for partnership, if you go for mutuality, if you go for sharing, you know, it's, it's not a fight. You don't have to make them wrong so you can be right. You don't have to make them wrong so you can be the innocent one. And people have this dichotomy going on. Since we're kids, we're told to be a good boy, a good girl. But if you're told to be a good boy, it's like what's left? It's being bad. So as soon as you have that category, good and bad, well, you're going to be bad. Even no matter how hard you tried. I tried as a, as a boy to be so good, but I felt like I was going to hell at seven years old, for God's sakes. Oh. <laughs> I, mean, I could have been just in, enjoying life, enjoying my family, enjoying, but no, I was just trying to get, get over that. But it was, it was good lesson. It was good research about guilt. <laughs> and, and, and how destructive it is, but it started at a really early age. Yeah. And, and to go at it so deeply and feel so guilty and come out the other side and to know that no guilt is true. Yes, it's true that we all feel guilt. It's not true any of the guilt. Yeah. 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 And we've certainly made mistakes. But the difference of guilt and Mistakes is you can correct mistakes mm -hmm. and you can get your life back because guilt means you get arrested. You get emotionally arrested. But if I ask you, what was the biggest guilt year of your life? It was at the age of <clears throat> three, right? You're just a little baby. Yeah. <laughs> and how many little guilty three-year-olds are there? 500. Right. And how have you been punishing yourself with those 500 little guilty girls? No relationship, bad relationships. With yeah. Relationships in general. Yeah. I mean, some people punish themselves by having relationships <laughs> and having bad relationships or heartbreaks or problems or, you know, they just punish themselves, but it's just not the truth. And when you get down, when you pull back the covers and you realize you were feeling guilty about that, you have 500 little girls. It, but it's this good girl, bad, it's really this bad girl attitude that comes up here. It's such a bad girl. So I deserve bad stuff or something like that. Yeah. 
I like bad girls. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what got you started thinking you were a bad girl? I lost my innocence. I'm sorry. How'd you do that? Uh, not behaving how my, my mom especially wanted me to. Uh-huh. Little... How did you want, how how did you want to behave? My way. <laughs> she oh. gave me kind of some order and I was like, no, I, I'm going this way. <laughs> you were a willful little baby. So, but good, bad. What if there's a better category that we could tell our kids that we could sit down with them and go, you know, this doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. And we want it, and there's a way for it to work for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so if you start that, I knew when I was uh, in my 20s, there was one woman, she had a, a boy who was kind of a, you know, a little troublemaker, you know. <laughs> You know, he was just, he was uh, a scoundrel, but you <laughs> sit down and talk to him. That kid turned out to be the most beautiful young man because she gave him that attention. She didn't make him wrong. She just asked him to expand his awareness. So notice that here's your mom, here's you. She wants you to be a, a good little girl you know, because then she could be a good mom. And yeah, you were it's like control, actually. It's it's more, it, it feels like she wants to control me. Yeah, which means she was afraid for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was afraid you would become like what? <laughs> <laughs> like no, how you get them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uncontrollable. Oh. Let's go back to three and let's ask Mother Mary and let's do your whole family and ask for Mother Mary to bring in holy family bonding. I mean, you can ask anybody up there, Kuan Yin, Buddha, David, anybody. They'll, they'll all, they're all working for the same team. Mm -hmm. And as they bring in this bonding for your family, It's just nice and fun and she's entering this she's letting she's loosening and she and then it's it's becoming fun and um when she becomes loosening mm -hmm. it's like uh how many guilty little girls are there now 20 <laughs> so how much can your life blossom never seen before it <laughs> comes up it's really like wow right, right. yeah <laughs> so and and that's just 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 healing because pain and problems are an illusion and so there's a, there is a way to find a way through this is just one of them you could ask for another layer of holy family bonding and then my dad loosens up and my dad becomes more fun sweet yeah wow <laughs> and how many guilty little girls are there one Left. one so why are, why are you afraid to lose her mm hmm I had to swallow and I was like, ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a control for, for me as well. It feels like it's this that I would loosen up or it, it's, it's something where I can hold myself onto. Gives me kind of security to, to not show up, to not be so fun or whatever. Not so be so flamboyant <laughs> in orange silk. <laughs> I mean, Betty, feel into this. Didn't you come to? Didn't you come to be out there? Isn't that part of your life path? Some people follow a quiet path. That's great. Some people follow a more flamboyant path. Yours is more flamboyant. But you're at odds with yourself. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. How many layers does this conflict go down with yourself? 200. Wow. Quite a bit. You've been fighting this fight for a long time. <laughs> yes. Luckily, I met you. <laughs> well, it can be so much easier, you know, and you can have so much more fun and be so much more effective. Yeah. Yeah. So you could ask um, the Holy Spirit who is oneness itself, who works in a world of separation to just bring oneness to this split in your own mind. So you have wholeness in your mind, which means confidence. It means peace. Ah, it's like breathing again for the first time, yeah. Because otherwise you're trying to control yourself. And the other part's going, can't catch me. But here, there's your one. You have one mind. You have a focus. There's no problem that doesn't have some kind of split mind, even though we have denial and hide so much of what's what we want, what we think. But all those thoughts, whether they're hidden or not, they have effect on us. They have effect on our world. But. We could change that world by not trying to change the world. You know, we've all made that mistake in, in relationships, but to change our mind. And one way to change our mind is to forgive, is to share. You know, when anybody is, at, see, it's like this, we have a whole world where there, of conflict, where everybody's different. You're over there, I'm over here. You have that body, I have this body. And basically, but how to create joining. And the more joining there is, the more love and partnership there is, which is sharing. Mm -hmm. And nobody has to lose. Mm -hmm. And then we get to a place of so much peace in the world that there doesn't have to be war. All of our minds are contributing to the wars going on. You know, and that's where forgiveness comes in. Another way to say that is we all have gifts that we could share. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, here's a sweet little exercise. Let's go back to your birth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what soul gift did you bring in for your mother? Who love comes up. Ooh. <laughs> now, would you open up that gift in yourself and share it with your mother? That's going to change some things. Yeah. Feel very good. What's the soul gift you brought in for your father? Divine love, divine connection comes up. This oh. is really huge. <laughs> so can you open up that gift that you brought in for your father and pour that into him? Ciao, Bob. Mm -hmm. What, what, what? <laughs> it's really amazing for him, yeah. Beautiful. What gift? What gift did you bring in for your brother? Trust and confidence. So would you open up those gifts and share those with your brother? Strengthen him very much. Sweet. So you want to, what gift did you bring in for your parents' relationship? Bonding. <laughs> so would you, you know, call for holy family bonding? For your family, all for one, one for all. It brings a lot of innocence. Yeah. yeah. And see, the more bonding there is, the more gifts emerge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no matter what problem we have, one of the things that I found out is underneath the problem, there's a gift. Underneath mm -hmm. the pain, there's a gift. Mm -hmm. And if you get intuit the gift or reason the gift and embrace it it's like the problem begins to melt away
<laughs> so there's an, another sweet little exercise I learned over the years that can save your parents a lot of problems. How would you like that? Yes, me and everybody watching for sure. <laughs> so what I have found working deep in the subconscious mind is that one of the reasons your parents got together, whatever their conscious story was and see i worked for a few years as a marriage counselor and um people would come in and they tell me all these reasons what was wrong and and they would tell me why they should get divorced yeah. you know and usually in the first session i go yeah that's great what else <laughs> you don't understand it's this and she's this way and he's that way and th there's all this stuff and i go yeah that's right. Okay. They go, and they're going, we shouldn't be together. She got pregnant or this happened or that happened. I go, yeah. Okay. So what is it you want now? Because everybody gets married for the wrong reason. We get married for what we're attracted to, what we need. But later that turns into a fight everybody gets married for the wrong reason but you could make a choice to get married for the right reason now if you want to do that and a lot of people choose to get married for the right reason which is very sweet but then it's a matter of going on a healing path and learning meanwhile back at your birth Betty. so your father craved some element, some uh, aspect, some gift of your mother. What was that he craved? Mm. I, I can't put it into words. It feels like fire energy just comes up. I, I can't really. Oh, charisma, fire energy, you know, that fire element. Mm -hmm. So can you go to your mother mm -hmm. and embrace that fire element and bring it over into your father. So that's fulfilled. It gives him life. It becomes alive through that. Mm -hmm. Great. And your father's family also craves something that your mother could contribute. Mm -hmm. What did they need? What, what, what did they want? What were they hoping for? No, they're not conscious of this. Mm -hmm. A kind of devotion, really. She devotes herself to them. Mm -hmm. So can you help bring that devotion over to your father's side of the family? Wow, yeah. They were really hungry for this. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Now, what... Did your mother crave from your father? A bonding, actually, kind of bonding, strong bonding. Mm -hmm. So can you bring that strong bonding from your father over to your mother? You're the bridge. Ooh. And now your mother's family <clears throat> needs this from your father to bring more wholeness and peace and confidence. Yeah, yeah. And joy. Gives them stability. Mm -hmm. So would you help bring that stability from your father over to your mother's side of the family? It's beautiful. Surprising. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Betty, all of those train wrecks, which are actually mistakes that were shattering, would you put, imagine with the angel's help, putting them on the altar of truth? Because they're not the truth. They're a mistake. And what's the gift? that have been hiding under 200 train wrecks. It's like fairy dust coming up, like, like stardust. 
And do do you naturally have an aspect of enchantment? <laughs> that's that's a part of mastery. Mm -hmm. And that's a part that you can give to life. Mm. You know, it's like the friends, they meet you, enchanté. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is that possibility for a connection that, that brings up this level. Okay. So now you have, um, imagine, <clears throat> ask those angels to bring all that fairy dust to all those 200 places where you went off the track you followed the ego's track oh wow so that means that you'll continue to go off the track because the ego just wants to build itself it just wants to be the most special one if it's the worst special one that's fine best special one it's preferred but not necessary And this is the principle of competition and separation in our mind. It's the principle of specialness, but it doesn't care about us. You know, as soon as we become a slave to the ego, we become the ego's bitch. It misuses us entirely. Uh, yeah. You know, it has us working for it. There's usually blood involved when it has to do with the ego. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So in those 200 times that you got off the track, <clears throat> can you ask the angels to carry you back onto heaven's path, which is a path of love and peace and joy and fun and innocence? Yeah. Just like that. <clears throat> chanted and miracles and just very sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how does your life seem now without 200 train wrecks that you've been dragging behind you? Yo. <laughs> Muscles. <laughs> Yeah, it feels actually, it feels really satin. It's just so silken. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, really sweet. So it's fun going back into the past, actually, with you. <laughs> because it can change. So would you put those curses you made on those poor fellows, you know, on the altar of truth? You know, this is a metaphor I learned in A Course in Miracles, and I found it to be very effective. And the gifts that were hiding underneath can come to the surface. What are the gifts? Blessing, blessing them. So you're right, the exactly. <sighs> Every judgment we have make something dark in the world. So every blessing, which is the opposite, realizing that that's a call for help. Mm -hmm. And that's my mind as a big mirror. So the more we bless, the more we clean the mirror and the more the world can become benign, just like if we forgive, which is what the Course in Miracles says is our really our only function here. Yeah. So you forgive and you forgive and you forgive and things change. Mm -hmm. But it, it sometimes takes a bit. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what was hiding? Uh, so give blessings to those poor boys that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they become alive. It's like, whoa. <laughs> Because everything you give, you give to yourself. If you curse, you curse yourself. On Molokai, um, one of the Hawaiian islands, there was it was known for its cursing kahunas. And so they could curse someone to death. Yeah, wow. this is in the Caribbean and stuff like this. 
I mean, I have a past life incident with that, trying to save the village from a cursing kahuna because they were all very touchy and they get upset and insulted about the, the smallest things. And then they go to, you know, have an excuse to curse you or curse the village or curse something or other. So. Anyhow, it's like all of them were old and desiccated. They were all dried up. Because, you know, the curses you send out hit you. Uh, yeah. Everything you do, you know, if, if you give love, love comes back to you. If you give hate, hate comes back to you. And it's so destructive. Yeah. And everyone's trying to compete and then they compare and then they hate. They hate what's missing in their life and they hate those who seem to have more. But anybody out there, <clears throat> even those people with gifts, those are things you judged about yourself. I can't handle that gift. Mm -hmm. So we put it out on somebody else. But you could welcome those gifts back. Mm -hmm. You can share those gifts. Otherwise, there's just envy, which blocks your flow. Mm -hmm set you up to compare and feel hatred mm -hmm. and that's your ego wow thank you so a question that's coming up <clears throat> session actually is about the war as you mentioned it um just give blessings to the war because it, as you said this is kind of our attack thought we are giving out into the world which is coming back because there is fear that the war is expanding or whatever so really give forgiveness and love into it. Yes, all of that helps. <clears throat> the war is a collective reflection of, the, of our unconscious mind on the earth. And so this is a time where we have chosen to heal so many unconscious things, wars, floods, tornadoes, famines, tsunamis. You know, all of that stuff is a... You know, what the weather does is it balances, yeah. it balances the weather, it balances the world. Okay, so um, basically this is, you know, if you look at it at, a, at this kind of deep soul level, it's trying to balance the ancient past where we screwed up. So it's coming to the surface as the compulsion to fight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we have that. So this is our mind. So uh, let's do this, Betty. Okay. Let's say the war is a reflection of some past life of yours. Let's just say that. Okay. Yeah. It was one that you would have lived in the country that's now called Australia as a man or a woman. Men. And somehow, if you were to know what happened back there, that is feeding uh, into this. Yeah, I, I was at war there, this soldier life time actually. So mm -hmm. what was the lesson you were looking to learn in that life? A peace. <laughs> yeah. It goes so well. <laughs> so let's go back to when you were just a little boy. Mm -hmm. What was the soul gift you brought into that life to learn that lesson easily and be happy? Innocence. And what was heaven's gift to you to learn that lesson easily and be happy? Truth. So as a little boy, can you open up your gift of innocence and receive heaven's gift of truth? Wow. Peace and peace always go together. And now go through that life sharing those gifts with everyone and everything. Peace, truth, innocence. <clears throat> changes everything. I, I become actually a healer. Changes instead of a soldier. Changes everything. How many steps did you get off the track in that life? 500. So imagine now that you 
can walk back there yourself or have the angels carry you. Have Mother Mary airlift you. Have Buddha, you know, mm -hmm. shot put you back on heaven's track. Yeah. And as you come through that life, walking heaven's track, mm -hmm. you can go through that life into all your lifetime since then, sharing those gifts also. Mm -hmm. Bring it all the way up to you as this little baby in this life, sharing gifts of truth and innocence. Wow. It's, wow. Bomb. But, but love bomb. <laughs> Incredible, yeah. And and it's, it's as we raise our consciousness, you know, we raise the consciousness of the earth. Yeah. Until at some point we wake up from this this world of dreams and we wake up into from a happy dream into the heavenly world, you know, heaven on earth world. And so we just keep transforming. Our mind, it's it's in here. That's that's the reflection of what's in here. And you can change this. Changing that, and that's that doesn't work so well. You know, we we've all tried to change our partner at some point or other. Good luck. Huh? But now, but we have this power. Okay. Now, uh, how does this feel? Now, this is just one aspect of all the things that add up to this um so let's deal with something what was the worst thing to happen to you in this life um violence comes up mm. Mm. how much violence did they have towards you toward me 20 percent, but yeah it's more maybe the, the violence I saw outside. It's not really that I have been attacked, but it's 20% towards me. Okay. How much violence did you have in your mind, if you were to know? Wow, 100. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that helped me get over some violence I had when I was a kid, you know, and I realized how much violence I had inside me. Whoops. Yeah. Sorry, double G and Shuli Gun, you know, <laughs> go man aside, you know. Ooh. And so now <clears throat> look out at that violence and say these words of power. I learned this from A Course of Miracles. I wrote a book on words of power from A Course of Miracles that if you say it with strong intention and you say it long enough, it dissolves the illusion. So let's do this one, Betty. I will forgive. And this will disappear. I will so, forgive. This will disappear. Yeah. So just say that time and time again, right into the heart of that scene. I will forgive and this will disappear. I will forgive and this will dis disappear. I will forgive and this will disappear. I will forgive and this will disappear. I will forgive and this will disappear. Okay, we're about halfway through. How does it look and feel now? 20% left. Just really it's, okay. it's getting smoother and, and tender. So let's press on. I will forgive and this will disappear. 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 How's it look now? How's it feel now? Incredibly touching because it was kind of freeing the assassins and everybody out there from, from their violence. Right. Wow. And then there's a place of peace where there was hidden conflict. Then we have to deny it. We have to defend against it, but it's still operating. It's still affecting Okay, here's one. Here's a big one for you, Betty. And we're going to do it similar. But see, if you're innocent, all you see is innocence. Mm -hmm. If you have guilt and judgment, self-judgment, then that you'll see that projected outside. That's the way the mind works. Mm 
Okay, so let's take your parents' relationship. Uh oh, <laughs> again, I will forgive. <laughs> I will forgive. No, it, no different. You, I mean, that's great. That's one works every time if you do it enough. But here's this one. Um, I won't condemn myself for this. Wow. Or I won't condemn myself like this. These are again, see if you're innocent, every everything's innocent, but let's go for it. Let's see what happens. Let's I won't try. condemn myself like this. I won't 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 condemn myself like this. How does, this. Yeah, how does it look and feel now? I mean, all of our minds collectively contribute to what's going on out there, but it can't be happening unless it's somewhere buried in my mind. So how, how does it look and feel now? It is, goes very strong with the guilt. It really, it feels like the guilt is falling off and more innocence is coming up. It's, it's very Great. strong. Yeah. Let's press on. I won't condemn. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I won't condemn myself like this. 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 How do, how do your parents look now? Free. Everybody looks free. That they don't have to play this role as well. It's really free. They can be authentic. They can, you know. Yeah. That's the power of our mind for construction or destruction. Wow. Thank you so much, Chuck. Yeah, it's like it's like to use our mind for good, for peace, for truth. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> want to do another one? Of course. Okay. Sure. Okay. So yeah. this this is about the war. Uh, yeah. What is the pattern that's being passed down ancestrally? Is it your mother or your father's side that's most feeding the war? My mother. How many generations back? 300. Yeah. Now, we, what I found, you know, over 20 years ago is that we all made promises that we would save our ancestors. And, and if we made that promise, there must be a way to do it. And as I said, you know, I found maybe a dozen different ways. Here, here's, here's a way. Um, and there, there's much quicker ways, but 300, let's see, if you were to know where, was it a man, a woman, or both where this problem began? A woman. And somehow, if you were to know what country she was living, what, what it's now called? Spain. <laughs> and somehow, if you were to know what happened back there. She had been tortured. Yeah, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> and um, how did things turn out? Uh, yeah, she became a bad witch and cursing and just really extremely frustrated and uh, sending out lots of uh, attack. Mm -hmm. And what got passed to her kids? Attack. Mm -hmm. and what, got, what got passed to the whole family? Destruction, distortion. Mm -hmm. And when it got down to your mother, how did it hit her? Men are not, when man, man, the man is the enemy. And when it got passed to you, how did it show up? Fighting. You say biting or fighting? <laughs> fighting, fighting. <laughs> the same. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Biting and fighting. 
So let's go back there with Mother Mary. Mm -hmm. Mary and Mother Mary. What gift do you have for her, your ancestor? Surrender. Hmm. Giving herself. And I have the gift of peace. Because if you got tortured on the outside, she was being tortured by something on the inside. Mm -hmm. So I want to give her the gift of peace. Mm -hmm. And what gift does Mother Mary have for her? Mm -hmm. Being held in, in, in motherly arms and love. Great. And so as we give those gifts, what happens to her? How's her life? Wow. Uh, breaking free out of her shells, actually. This torture was really like breaking free out of this whole torture chamber. So <clears throat> let's ask Mother Mary to carry it down through your mother's side of the family. All the way down. All these gifts tra transforming in each generation. And as it gets to your mother, how does it show up for your mother? Blossoming. She's a flower. <laughs> yeah. And when, when did she get to pass to you? <clears throat> so it feels like true femininity. It's really sweet. <laughs> Loving, caring, nurturing. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. So, and now that's going out into the world because all of our minds are connected. And so <clears throat> what's being acted out there is, is the wounds in us, the ancient deep wounds in us, in our families, in our, in our past life stories. And that keeps us stuck. And we think we can't do anything, but we could do the forgiveness exercise. We could do, I won't condemn myself like this. Because yeah. it's, it's affecting everybody. It's just this wound going out on the earth. Mm -hmm. and, and to know that we have power. I mean, we were created in God's image. You know, that's limitless power. There's zero limits, but we have all of these things where our ego doesn't want us to know how powerful we are. It wants us to rely on it for all of its suggestions. For instance, think of a problem that you've had this last week, emotion, problem, anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's your ego saying about it? If you were to know. Run. <laughs> 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 what's your higher mind saying about it uh, to, to bring in myself to, to give myself so you know the you know the, the common wisdom is always seek a second opinion <laughs> yes. so when the ego says something get a second opinion yeah what percentage of your ego, you know, made that suggestion? 100. A hundred percent of your ego. So say, come here. <laughs> now, I'd like to introduce you to my higher mind. Here, yeah. step, in, step into my higher mind. And then it dissolves because it's separation. And the higher mind is basically, uh, it says someplace in the Course of Miracles, there's just one higher mind. It's just like there's just one Holy Spirit. There's just the Holy Spirit, the Tao, same thing. It's just East and West way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. But it's like we're going to a point where all of the conflicts, all of the separation, all of the differences dissolve into shared gifts, into shared love into fun yeah and it feels good it just this feels right and feels good yeah. and so it's just i mean if if we're not happy we're meant to be happy 
I mean, that's, you know, God's happy. God's <laughs> joy. <laughs> well, what does he want for his kids? <laughs> Don't make me come down there. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. This was really miraculous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. You're so welcome. Thank you. I hope everybody enjoyed the exercise. It was really great. <laughs> Always enjoy to be here with you. Yeah, so we do. You. We all do. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy your day, your Hawaiian sunshine day. I hope so. And see you soon. Lots of love. Just Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>